Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom 5. In today's video we are starting a new chapter which is chemical energetics. We are going to start this chapter with a revision of the O-level chemistry concept, energy profile diagrams. If you remember O-level chemistry, we have talked about energy profile diagrams over there where it was a graphical analysis of the progress of any reaction with a function of the energy. So imagine a chlorine molecule in the gaseous state it has a CLCL bond and a hydrogen molecule which has the HH bond it's also in the gaseous state. These are my reactants here so I am hoping to react chlorine with the reactant number two which is hydrogen and I'm hoping to make hydrogen chloride gas. When these molecules are put together they obviously move and they collide. So they are moving because of their kinetic energy so it's very much possible they will be moving towards each other. When they move towards each other obviously they will collide. <clears throat> so they possess kinetic energy which is the reason for their motion. So when they move they might collide with each other and as soon as they collide that is where the bonds of the reactant have to be broken if they want to make a product. So as soon as the collision happens the HH bond and the CLCL bond has to be broken. Let's analyze this more closely. So when the CLCL bond and HH bond are there the old bonds are broken down and the new bonds are made. You can see the HH bond is broken down with the CLCL bond and HCL bonds are made. So old bonds are broken down, new bonds are made. And that is exactly the reason that molecules need to absorb energy known as activation energy. Imagine a graph with progress of reaction on the x-axis and the potential energy of the particles on the y-axis. Hydrogen gas and chlorine gas were my reactants. When these particles had their own potential energy, they had a lower potential energy and we are just taking a hypothetical value. But as soon as the graph begins, the particles are just moving in the beginning, like they're just moving in the beginning towards each other. And then they reach a top and then they reach the product. Why do they need so much high potential energy at the peak? Because the HH bond and the CLCL bond have to be broken down while HCL bond has to be made. So in the beginning, they have to absorb energy to break the bonds and they reach a peak with high potential energy. At high potential energy is needed to break the old bonds. So the graph is going upwards because energy is absorbed because they want to break the reactant bonds. And then you can see that this arrow is moving upwards because the reactant bonds are broken down and we need energy for that. That is known as the activation energy. So activation energy is the energy that begins the reaction. By the end of the reaction we get the product which is the HCl. So hydrogen chloride is the product we receive it. And the net change of energy from the reactant to the product, from the reactant level to the product level, that net change in energy is known as the enthalpy. We call it the delta H, the enthalpy, and that is the difference in energies. The graph is moving upwards in the beginning because that's bond breaking and then it's moving downwards because that's bond making and bond making releases energy. That is the background of an energy profile diagram. Let's analyze a more detailed energy profile diagram with progress of reaction on the x-axis and the potential energy on the y-axis. We have the energy units with joule. Imagine this kind of energy profile diagram where A and B react to make C and then the C reacts with X to make something called let's suppose Y and Z. 
you can see it's a combination of two energy profile diagrams. You can notice that A, B react to form C and X. Basically, that is your step number one. So starting from AB till CX, that is step number one. And from CX till YZ, step number two. The first peak was first step, the second peak was the second step. You can see the in, you can see the activation energy by the way of step number one EA1. And then from the CX till the peak, you can see this arrow. Now I'm making this arrow, which is the activation energy number two, which is for step number two. Since the activation energy number two is more than the activation energy number one, the second step has more activation energy requirement, so step two would be slower because it has to absorb more energy to start the reaction, right? Activation energy controls the speed of the reaction. Higher activation energy slows down the reaction. And that is why step number two would be slower. Now let me make red colored arrows for the enthalpy. So from AB level to the level of the product, delta H1, which means enthalpy one. The arrow is moving downwards. The arrow for delta H1 is moving downwards. So it's a negative enthalpy and step one is exothermic. From CX till the YZ, you can see another red arrow which is the enthalpy change number two. That is the delta H for the second step. The arrow here move upwards, which means it's a positive enthalpy change, it's endothermic reaction. For the overall step, you can see it's starting from AB and ending at YZ. So the overall step starts at AB and ends at YZ. YZ has a higher level, you can see from my purple arrow, Starting from AB and ending at YZ, the overall reaction delta H is endothermic. So the total enthalpy change from AB till YZ is endothermic because the arrow is moving upwards. I hope we are able to analyze the energy profile diagrams in more depth and that would have cleared more of our concepts. Stay tuned guys. Thanks.